Thank you very much. We must be moving from the front stage villain to the backstage hero. Um, I mean, here I am, a former politician, now a banker, talking about happiness. I mean, how credible is that? It's really wonderful to be here uh, today. And in my 12 minutes, I will give you an introduction, three points, and a conclusion. And in these 12 minutes, I will have given the recipe for what happiness is all about. You see, by way of introduction, the interesting thing is that happiness is something that we all seek. I actually think it's the meaning of life. Aristotle talked about it. John Locke talked about it. The U.S. Constitution talked about it. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But it's also an extremely individual thing. You know, if I ask you what makes you happy, it's probably something completely different from what makes me happy. For me, when I hear the words 12 minutes, I think of a Cooper test, and that makes me happy. For some of you, you might say, Alex, you're nuts. That's not fun. That's not happiness. I think that in order for an individual to be happy, you need to have an ingredient with three things in it. Body, mind, and empathy. Number one, then, is body. And here... I think there are three things that you need to do in order to feel good about yourself. Number one is you need to sleep enough. How many of you slept eight hours last night? Uh, 10%, you know my percentages, they're fairly close. <laughs> uh, it's important to rest. You cannot work on four hours or five hours or six hours of sleep. You need the recovery time. Number two, I would argue you need to eat well. And the older you get, the better you need to eat. It's different when you're young. You can work on crisps, you can work on energy drinks and other things, but as you grow older, it's a little bit like a hangover. You know, it's not what it used to be, right? A bottle of wine was quite easy when you were young. Nowadays, you know, it takes two days to recover. <laughs> the bottom line is that, you know, you are what you eat. Food can be really tasty and good. It doesn't have to be unhealthy. If you want to be happy in your body, I think you need to uh, eat well. And number three is exercise. And here I'm not saying that you need to be a nutcase like myself, put on lycra, sweat it out, scream and shout, and enjoy Cooper tests. Exercise can be just walking to work, walking upstairs, going cycling, going swimming, doing aerobics, zumba, whatever you get kicks out of. But my argument is that one hour of exercise gives you two more hours of energy for each and every day. So in terms of your body, it does not matter what you look like. What matters is what it feels like. And I would argue the body feels pretty damn good when you've slept well, when you've eaten well, and you've gotten a little bit of exercise. Point number one. Point number two is mind. And here we don't think about it very often. But if you are like me, I think we should be on high alert. I have noticed that as time goes on and as the instrument at our disposal go on, I get more and more short-term in my thinking and in my attention span. I surf the net, I'm on social media, I check my email, I click around wherever I go. And what I'm leaving out is deep reading. And I actually believe that when you want to fulfill the mind, when you want to train the mind, when you want to fulfill the soul, you need to read and you need to deep read. And I will give you uh, a challenge once we approach the conclusion. But in order for you to train the mind, you need to do three things all the time. Number one is to read. And I don't consider opening my Twitter feed every morning and reading the latest uh, tweet from Donald Trump being an intellectual, you know, rega. It's not. That kind of puts you probably in a bad mood. But that's how things go. But you need to deep read. What else do you need to do? I think you need to listen to people. I think you need to write. And I think you need to observe. Those are all things that train the mind. And if you want to take it one step further, and as I grow older, I do have a dream of training my mind. I want to do two things. One is to learn how to play, play an instrument, 
because I'm really bad at it. I've tried to start playing the guitar three times, once with my son, uh, and I'm just a miserable failure. But I think it's great intellectual stimulus. And the second thing, I want to learn a new language. I don't do grammar at all. I just do language by feel. But I, I, I wish I could pick up another one. So in order for you to train your mind, I would argue, you have to be curious. You have to be open to new impulses. You have to let all of your prejudices go. It is part of human nature to have a prejudice. You get a picture of a human being through the public eye, or what they look like, or what they have said. But until you have met that human being, you don't know what that human being is like. And you cannot and you should not make a value judgment. So be curious and fight all of your life. Fight cynicism. That is the worst mental disease that you can have. The minute that you think that you know better than someone else, I think you're done for. So read, write, listen, observe, and learn something new with an open mind. Point number three is empathy. I think as we, the Homo sapiens, develop, we are going to, according to many, not least Harari, in both Homo sapiens and Homo deus, we're going to evolve. We're not going to be regular human beings anymore. There is going to be a time when we become cyborgs or when we become some kind of hybrids. And some would argue that with our smartphones, we kind of already are. We get impulses and reactions which our brains weren't used to doing before. And we are going to get to a stage whereby robots, digitalization, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things will do things for us that we as human beings had to do previously. And then there's one thing I would argue that we're left with, and that is empathy. And empathy is about how we as human beings treat each other. And for me the key is, and I say this as someone who has felt quite often as an incomplete husband, incomplete father, or incomplete prime minister, or incomplete friend, I say it with sincerity, you have to work at this. You have to be present with other human beings. You have to be present in any, every conversation that you have. You know, my son is here today. Uh, first time he's listening to me speak for 12 minutes and he doesn't, he hasn't fallen asleep yet, which I, which I think is great. But that's where it all starts from. It, it starts basically from your kin, from your family. Then it moves on to your friends. And then it moves on to the relationships that you have at work. And I know that we are getting a sense that there's more violence, there's more viciousness, and there's more meanness in this world. I, I don't buy that argument. We just see it more at face value because of social media, media, or other things. I actually think that the world is becoming a better place. Believe it or not, we have much less violence than ever before. And I say this carefully, not least in the light of what we have seen in Barcelona yesterday or what we saw uh, in the United States uh, earlier this, this week. We have less disease and we have less famine. So what's left is human relations and empathy. And here's where I come to my conclusion after uh, body, mind and empathy is to give you three pieces of advice on how to conduct this happiness package. The first one is very theoretical. It's something I call 8 plus 8 plus 8. Uh, I believe that happiness is something that takes place right now. It's not something that happened. It's not something that you have in the future. It's something that you need to live with all the time. And what I've tried to do in my life is to live a life of 8 plus 8 plus 8. I've miserably failed, but it's a good aim. What does that mean? It means eight hours of sleep a night. It means eight hours of hard work a day. And it means eight hours of your own time for whatever you spend that time with. I don't believe in these people who say that they can do 20 hour work days and be effective. That's, am I allowed to say bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> TEDx, you'll hear beep. I, it, 
it, it doesn't go like that. You can be effective for approximately maximum of eight hours. Someone got it right when they said that. So eight plus eight plus eight. My point number two, and it's, it's a challenge. I, I just wrote my Blue Wings column on it, and it's out on September. And then this stems from, from my thinking or reading. And please join me in this challenge. It's a one plus one plus one day. What am I trying to say with that? Having noticed that I faff around too much on social media and elsewhere and do not read enough, I have made a rule which starts on the 1st of September this year and ends on the 1st of September next year, that every day I will do three things. One hour of reading a book. Huh? You read about 400 words uh, a minute. Uh, with that pace, you can go up to 100, 200 books, depends a little bit on the length of the books. Okay. Number two, I will exercise one hour a day. Well, I do that anyway, so that's kind of easy. No problem. It doesn't have to be the Cooper test. And number three, I will spend only one hour on social media a day. And that will be my one plus one plus one rule. And every month I will post my uh, uh, record on Facebook to see if I'm able to do this. Now, my wife said, that's easy for you because you're moving to Luxembourg and the family is staying here. I said, well, yeah, it's true, but I will try. One plus one plus one, feel free uh, to join me. And the final thing uh, I want to say, as that thing has gone blank, uh, what final thing I want to say uh, is about empathy. It, it, it's four words that, that I tell my children every night when we go to bed, and it's something that my parents told me as well. Um, and and I, I just want you to remember those four words, because I, I, I think they sort of form a package in which happiness can, can exist, because happiness is a process. And the four words are dream, and dream big always. Believe, believe in those dreams, and believe that you can actually do it. So dream, believe, work hard. I know it's two words, but still. And finally, fourth, succeed. So dream, believe, work hard, and succeed. If you can keep that package, I would argue that you can develop a stage of happiness. And if you keep the package of taking care of your body, taking care of your mind, and taking care of the people around you, I think that's what happiness is all about. Thank you very much.